Now, a young man in early 30s on retroviral therapy, admitted with pneumonia, he has now developed fever and mild chest pain and his x-ray is being shown to you. So what is this x-ray basically showing? It is showing a pleurothoracic empyema in a largely infected pleural collection. So here you should know, what is a lung abscess, what is a pleural effusion, what is a empyema? Lot of people don't know. So it is so simple, uh, difference you don't know. I mean, good number of people don't know. So, doctor, let me tell you, around the lung you have a pleural cavity. Into that, if the fluid collects, you call effusion. Into that, the pus collects, you call empyema. But directly inside the lung, whenever the pus collects, it's called uh, lung abscess. For draining the empyema, you have to put the intercostal drainage tube, rupture into the enter into the pulmonary pleural cavity and then drain it out. Whereas in the case of the lung abscess, where will you push the intercostal drainage tube? You can't puncture the lung, right? So here treatment is antibiotics for 6 weeks. Here the treatment is antibiotics plus drainage of pus. If you look at radiologically, how do you differentiate the two? Typically when the pus is in the pleural cavity, it will be like a fusiform, fusiform collection. Whereas when the pus is there in the lung, it is typically a spherical collection of pus. That is how you differentiate between empyema and the lung abscess. A 40 year old male, a known case of bronchogenic carcinoma on chemotherapy with complaints of fever and productive cough since 2 weeks. A chest x-ray is being shown. So, uh, what is the important finding? So, this is a lung abscess classically. Which is a spherical lesion with the air fluid level. Huh? Why it cannot be spread of neoplasm? It is a known case of bronchogenic carcinoma presented with fever and productive cough. Cavitating lesion. Huh? Below the cavity. You importance of the history. Fever, why will it come? Unless the infection is there. If infection is there, this kind of a shape of infection is abscess. Simple. Huh? That's the thing. Now, a patient present with diarrhea, colonoscopy and biopsy have been shown. So, typically colonoscopy is showing villus adenoma. Villus adenoma lead to development of a secretory diarrhea. And that makes a person to lose electrolytes. And that typically lead to development of a hypokalemic metabolic acidosis is a known dyselectrolytemia and the ABG disturbance in a patient with villus adenoma who has got a secretory diarrhea. 55 year old postmenopausal women on hormone replacement therapy and a screening mammogram has been done. So, what is this mass most likely to represent? It is a carcinoma. How do you recognize highly dense, high density, speculated mass with cluster of pleomorphic uh, calcifications is the classical description of um, malignancy. Now, patient has got a testicular cancer, patient C and a spread as shown. So, what is the treatment of choice? So, here we want to do high inguinal orchidectomy and radiotherapy. Why? So, basically looking at the type of cancer, you should know which stage it is. So, typically what is this patient is having? He is having <coughs> uh, uh, a stage 1 cancer. For the stage 1 seminoma, Typically, if you look at the treatment, it is surveillance, radiotherapy and chemotherapy are considered to be the management of choice. Now, which malignancy can occur into this goiter? Into this goiter, follicular carcinoma, multinodular goiter leads to follicular carcinoma is what you need to remember. Then, uh, the typical stone is the appearance of the struvite. 
then uh, in a male after laparoscopic cholecystectomy specimen is sent histopathology which shows carcinoma gland gallbladder of stage 3a so what is the management of the patient so whenever you happen to do a laparoscopic cholecystectomy and a specimen is showing carcinoma you should always do excision of all the port sites so that is considered to be the clinical management patient present with dysphagia for both the solids and liquids that means it's an obstructive lesion and his barium is showing uh, the typical figure so what are the predisposing conditions so caustic ingestion or a carcinoma of vagus due to papilloma virus or diverticular any of them can be responsible for a obstructive type of dysphagia which is typically for both solids and liquids echolasia and other things you know uh, it won't be equal for both solids and liquids now with regard to the imaging and histology which is being shown here what do you like to consider it's a fibril lamellar carcinoma and fibril lamellar carcinoma unlike that traditional hepatocellular afp levels are not elevated that's what you need to appreciate a child is having ultrasound which is showing the typical appearance of the hypertrophic pyloric stenosis and what is the metabolic abnormality that you see in this hypochloremic hypokalemic metabolic acidosis is what you need to remember now there is a tumor of the parotid and typically adenocystic appearance is being shown adenocystic is known to lead to development of a perineural invasion among the parotid tumor remember parotid tumor is a very high yield topic in variably every need pg exam you expect one question now the lesion is typically periumbilical lesion which is sister mary joseph nodule which is typically seen in case of stomach cancer ramesh is a 62 year old he has got a solid renal carcinoma of the ct uh, on the ct what is not true about it so whenever renal tumor is there uh, um it has invaded the renal vein and inferior vena cava and uh, if the ivc invasion is there it does not always mean a inoperable condition so that's the point of uh, gist then in the kidney the lesion is 4 cm less than 4 cm and biopsy showing clear cell carcinoma renal so what is the treatment it is typically the partial nephrectomy when the size is less than 4 cm a lot of times in bailey and love prostate cancer renal cell carcinoma hepatocellular carcinoma based on staging we don't uh, what is the treatment that aspect we ignore but you have to be only three kinds of treatment are surgery or radiation or uh, chemo so you must know which is the one day based on the staging basically know what is this condition fracture of the humerus which injures the radial nerve because the radial groove then um, uh, typically in this test promen sign promen sign right um, and uh, yeah even cart test is other thing so cart test is between the two fingers you put and try to drag this is promen so here it is the adductor pollicis which is typically weak whenever ulnar nerve injury is there normal and if you ask the person to hold it will be fromenting then uh, why it froments and what is the reason for that posture all that i leave in the literature please read so at least uh, you try to remember <coughs> uh froments is because of the paralysis of which muscle that's what examiner asks adductor pollicis and which muscle compensate for that weakness of the adductor pollicis it is the flexor pollicis longus that is responsible for the flexion at the time of uh, holding and what is that flexor pollicis longus supplied other than ulnar nerve ulnar nerve is not the one naturally which is innervating it it is a median nerve which is innervating so adductor pollicis is innervated by ulnar and when ulnar is injured it is not working and that is compensated by flexor pollicis longus which is supplied by median nerve 
and uh, how do you describe from it? It is a flexion of the interphalangeal joint. Is what you need to remember. So, what is the attitude that you are seeing? It is typically seen in the case of the anterior dislocation of the hip. So, anterior dislocation of flexion, abduction, and lateral rotation. And uh, fadil, flexion, adduction, internal rotation is a posture dislocation. Okay. Now, uh, this is an example of a flexion, adduction, internal rotation is posture dislocation and anterior dislocation which we have seen. Huh? Obviously, obviously, because dashboard injuries are much more common, right? Whereas in the case of shoulder, anterior dislocation is more common and posture occur only in those who have epilepsy or electroconvulsive therapy that only lead to posture dislocation of shoulder. So, what is this process? It is an Austin Moore. So, in tomorrow's exam, you must know how to recognize the Austin Moore and a Thompson. So, this fenestration makes you to think of Austin Moore. Moore has got two O's, no? Moore. So, two fenestrations. Don't tell Dr. Murli Bharadwaj's speech like that. A 65 year old with osteoarthritis, what do you see? Herbert and nodules. Then, what is this condition typically being shown? So, typically bony ankylosis versus fibrous ankylosis. <coughs> fibrous ankylosis is the common outcome of healed TB of the joints, except in spine it lead to, uh, where it lead to bony ankylosis. Septic arthritis leads to bony ankylosis. And it is the most common cause of any bony ankylosis that you see. So, what you are seeing here is an example of a fibrous ankylosis. So, fibrous ankylosis is typically caused by TB, arthrogryposis or rheumatoid arthritis. TB causes bony ankylosis only in spine. And everywhere septic arthritis lead to bony ankylosis. That's the point. Now, where do you see this kind of salt and pepper appearance of fundus? Actually, they should not mention it is salt and pepper. You should know what is salt and pepper. So, it is syphilis. Now, in this given picture, the nasal cavity is showing a leafy polypoidal mass. So, typically, where do you see this? It is an example of rhinosporidiasis. Actually, without that picture only, if the description is given, you are all AIPG toppers. You will answer, but neat PG means ideally only picture should be shown. 34 year old with bilateral nasal obstruction and uh, tenderness over the bridge of the nose, complaints of fever with chills with frontal headache. So, infection is also there. So, that is suggestive of septal abscess. Now, woody nose with a granuloma, classically or rhinoscleroma. Now, what is the kind of the nasal septal fracture you are able to see? So, it is a clear case of Jarjave type of fracture. Jarjave is C-shaped fracture of the nasal septum. Whereas, the Chevalet's fracture is isolated fracture of the nasal septum. That is what you need to recognize. Now, what is the type of nasal uh, septum fracture? This one. This is called Chevalet's. Huh. Perpendicular plate of ethmoid is the one which is involved and uh, C shaped is Jarjave and uh, Chevalet is isolated fracture of the natural septum. Now, in the vocal cord what you are seeing? You are typically seeing in the vocal cord re is edema and re is edema is also polypoidal degeneration and polypoid choroiditis, edematous hypertrophy is the name which is being given for the re is edema. Now, typically what is the type of the hearing aid that you are able to see in this picture? So, typically it is behind the ear kind of hearing aid. Now, in this picture what do you see? Ranula, which is not a cannula. So, uh, retention cyst. So, Typically, what is this kind of incision that you give into the eardrum called as? It is basically called Rosen's endomiatal incision, which is used for stepidectomy, is what you need to appreciate. 
Now what do you see in this photo? Typically you see a vocal cord nodule, singer. So that is how we come to the end of 150 neat PG image based questions. Every week two tests means you answer 3,300 questions, 25 tests, uh, no, 12 weeks means around 4,000 image based questions. That's maximum what examiner can even dream of creating, right? And at least you know after solving about 4,000 questions image based, how to at least make a reasonable guess. So let's meet on Sunday. Please come to the class. I will be very happy to see the students in the classroom, even online students, please come. Thank you. And download today only UMedico. That's what I like to tell you.